subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon, so you never miss any video from my channel. Yo! Welcome to Out Camera TV. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share with y'all with things like Facebook and Reddit and Instagram and wherever else. And guys, some little things, you know, be coming out about Panther you know, from Panther Nation. Well, obviously the Panthers. Um, they, they, you know, some things been going on recently. Whatever that I got to cover. Uh, keep you guys in the loop. You know what I'm saying? Because uh, stuff, you know, it kind of slicks by. But you know, I'm here to give y'all the information. So, you know what I'm saying? There's obviously a uh, Panthers potential buyer. You know, checking out the facility and you know some job prospects that people are looking into. So let's get started. Now, South Carolina businessman Ben Navarro is actually checking out the Panthers uh, stadium and organization out today. Um, you know, if you watched my earlier videos, you know what I'm saying, I've talked about him a few times, saying that he was a potential buyer of the Panthers. Um, this comes after a week of, um, you know, after Alan Kestenbaum, the Canadian steel billionaire, uh, went and checked out the Panthers organization, the stadium, and everything like that. So, this is expected. They said David Tipper is um, projected to go check out the stadium and everything like that, you know, say sometime soon. But he has a certain majority, on his, his minority stake in the Steelers before he can buy the Panthers. So... They say you probably gonna check out this facility soon. Um, it's not gonna be sold to like May twenty first or twenty third. That's the next uh, league meeting, which is in Atlanta. But um, I don't know. From what I've heard, I think people are saying David Tipper is still in the lead. Um, I seen a lot of my Carolina Panther fans do not want David Tipper. To, well, I can't say do not want. I I've, I've seen a few of them wanted Ben Navarro by the team because they want somebody from Carolina by the team, which is understandable. Um, you know what I'm saying? But I've been on the David Tipper side because I feel like his connection to, bat, uh, to football and his connection to, um, you know, just football in general and the Roonies and everything like that, whatever, his face will be very empowering and powerful in the league meeting, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of these guys probably know him already, let's be honest, you know what I'm saying? Because he's been in the, um, the NFL, you know, as, as a minority owner, I'm pretty sure a lot of the owners know him, you know, they probably have a good relationship with him. And, um... I wouldn't be surprised if he has a lead over the other ones. Now, mind you, Ben Navarro, I think he would be a good candidate too. He has some kind of he has some ties, which I've talked about before, um, to you know football, he a football background, and everything like that. But um, it's one thing to have ties to football, and it's another thing to be in football. And David Tipper is in football. Now, mind you, Alan Kirschenbaum, I think he's a like I said, a distant third. You know, I think he's he's a distant third. I think I I don't want him to you know buy the team because. Some people did allude to, you know what I'm saying, he might want to move the team, which I hope does not happen. I do not want the Carolina Panthers to move at all. That's something I'm definitely not for. And, you know what I'm saying, since he's a Canadian, he might want to bring a football team to Canada. So I definitely don't want him to buy a team. And I don't think he will buy a team. I think David Tipper's number one, Ben Navarro's number two, and I think he's a distant third. But his money is long. So we'll see if what the owners value. Do they value, you know what I'm saying, uh, Camaraderie, people they know, people they trust, so they value money. We'll see, you know, because I think David Tipper and Ben Navarro have more in common and more, you know, just a better relationship with the overall owners, especially David Tipper, than Alan Christianbaum. Because before, like a few weeks ago, I didn't really hear anything about him, you know what I'm saying? So I think Ben Navarro is a, a good candidate, but I ultimately think David Tipper is going to buy a team. But, you know, if David Tipper doesn't buy the team, I definitely want Ben Navarro to buy the team because I think if Alan Kirschenbaum gets a team, he's going to move it to Canada, and I'm definitely against that. You know, I don't want to go to no freaking below zero to watch the Toronto Panthers, which would be horrible. It would sound horrible. So, and he might want to change the colors. I'm, I'm, not, I'm just completely not for it. So, hopefully, David Tipper and Ben Navarro make it happen. Because obviously, you know, Michael Rubin's out of there and there's so many people that got eliminated because their money wasn't long enough, like I've been saying. So hopefully David Tipper or Ben Navarro makes it happen. But in other news, um, you know what I'm saying, the NFL draft is pretty close. It's less than a month away. And um, there's a name that came out that uh, I didn't see coming, man. I, it kind of it blindsided me. I definitely didn't have him nowhere on my board or whatever. Um, but uh, the Panthers seem to really like Ito Smith from Mississippi State. Now, mind you, um, he's a 5'9 running back. That's like 202 pounds. And they said he's a very, you know, shifty. He's not, okay, he's a good catcher out of the backfield. He's a shifty, elusive back. But he's not really the power back that I was expecting, you know. And um, they're saying, you know, probably Christian McCaffrey would take over, the, you know, the, the more predominant, you know, running game. And, you know, Ito Smith would be the third down, change the pace back, and catch balls, and run real good routes. 
Now, I was not thinking this. I was not thinking this at all. This is coming straight from left field for me. I was on the, uh, the you know what I'm saying, the impression, under the impression that we was going to get a bigger back. Now, mind you, not that I think we're going to get like a, you know, a Garrett Blunt type back. Of course not. You know, I thought we were going to get like a, you know, a bigger back that can, you know, uh, cause havoc, you know, dictate to the defense. But I guess they think Christian McCaffrey can do that. Well, for me, you know, I can't say he can't do that because he had limited, you know, reps. You know, he was behind John Stewart. He had limited reps, but um, I just didn't see that last year. I mean, now mind you, he did gash defenses for, you know, pretty good runs, you know, but he wasn't, he's more of a, you know, hit a, see a crease, hit the crease type running back than a, okay, I'm going to run this person over, I'm going to cause damage for the defense. And I think, I thought we needed that. I thought that was, you know what I'm saying, something that would, uh, that, you know, benefited us because we constantly, you know, banged up and hit the defense over and over and over again, which tired them and slowed them down. But uh, I guess that's not what they're thinking. Um, I don't know, man. It's, I, I'm not, you know, I think I don't know about the Ito Smith kid. I mean, I don't have that much information on him. I don't think he's going to be that bad, but he's 5'9". Um, I feel like if we're going to, if we're going to get him, we might well stay with Cap. I'm, and, I, and I've been the main one saying, Cap can't do it. Cap shouldn't be the, uh, you know, the power back. But if we're gonna get a five nine guy, we might want to, uh, you know, what I'm saying Cameron Artis Payne and try him out because I don't think this five nine guy could, you know, do anything way really to defenses, especially because how big, you know, he's five nine and he was going against, you know, college defenses. Now he's going against, you know, what I'm saying NFL linebackers that you know run like a four five four six and you know they're, and they're like two times the size and hit harder. I don't know, man. I, don't, I see him getting injured a lot because of his size, you know, his stature. Now, mind you, he's a 202 pounds, so he's like he's a little bit stockier, but I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I don't really trust the small and smaller uh, players. The only small player I seen take a lot of brunt was uh, Steve Smith, and I mean, and then you got the opposite side of that, and Percy Harvin, who was like, you know, paper. He got injured left and right, you know what I'm saying? So I definitely think, you know, Ito Smith is a no go for me. But that's definitely a name that's coming up. It seems like the parents are really, they really like him. They're enamored by him. So we'll see what happens. Correction. Uh, Ito Smith's from Mississippi. He's Mississippi's running back, not Mississippi State. But in other news, uh, the Panthers seem really smitten by DJ Moore, man. They seem smitten by this guy. They really like him. Um, you know, obviously they sent North Turner and Lance Turner to go check out his pro day. I They really like the kid, man. And I, I think he's, um, he's definitely not... One of the top ones on my board, obviously, again, you know. But, um, you know, I guess they were thinking something different. He is a very, I heard he's a very good route runner. I've seen the pro day. He actually is a pretty good route runner. Um, he's six foot. So, I mean, I like I said, I've, I want more of a, you know, diverse uh, receiving core. But, you know, if they like him, they like him for a reason. So, I can't be mad at that. Um, I don't know if he's going to play outside or inside. I'm thinking he'll play more outside because, you know, we need outside receivers. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm thinking he'll be more of an outside receiver. You know, I think he's, you know, a good route runner. So, I definitely think he'll get separation. And, you know, but I was, my opinion was um, more of a taller variety. You know, taller, faster variety. Um, but I, I don't think he's slow. I don't think DJ Moore is slow. But I think, you know, DJ Chark was, you know, he ran a 4-3-4. And he's like 6-2, 6-3, you know. So, he's a, he's a taller, faster receiver. Um... But, you know, the main job receiver is catching the ball, and DJ Moore has pretty good hands, and he has very good routes, you know what I'm saying? So, I think uh, he has very good routes, but I'm, I'm me personally, I'm more on the DJ Chark side, Calvin Ridley side, but um, obviously, you know, maybe they think Calvin Ridley won't be there when they when they need to select, or maybe they think about going safety early, or cornerback early, you know, like the Jerry Alexander, you know, maybe they think about him, but um, I mean, I wouldn't be mad at that. I mean, we definitely need secondary help, which, you know, I've stated. But um, I just thought it would be more of, you know, in the later rounds, I thought, you know, getting Cam Newton help was paramount, which, you know, it might still be. We don't know where they're going to draft, but I think from what I'm seeing, I think DJ Moore might be, he might be a, he might be a late first. He might be a late first. Uh, depending on where the draft, ball, board, the draft board falls out, he might be a late first. Um, then he might be a second rounder. Who knows, you know? Uh, but uh, they really like him. Uh, I see that you know they they're they're in interviewing him all the time, and I think he's gonna go out and, and uh, see the team or see the, you know go out to the team on a scheduled uh, meet. So um, maybe they lean towards DJ Moore, but you know they always do smoke screens. That's another thing you guys gotta be um, worried of. You know is that teams do smoke screens, man. They'll say they love this player, 
just so somebody won't draft them or they'll say, um, you know, they love this player, so play, uh, the team can draft them and they get the player they actually love. So don't be surprised, you know what I'm saying, because it happens, man. Like, they, you guys send on small screens. You don't want teams knowing what you want to do. You don't want teams messing up your draft board because, let's be honest, it's a competition and teams will draft players. You know, they might have them at one level and they see you are, you know, interested in him and you really like him. And then they'll be like, hey, man, you know, we need that position anyways, and he's a good prospect. He may not be as great as, you know, what we think he is, but to affect that team and mess up their draft board, we'll draft him. He'll be a good player for us, and, you know, we'll mess up their draft board. So, you know, he might be a smoke stream. He might be a real thing. I mean, don't get me wrong. He got a Steve Smith seal of approval during the combine. He said DJ Moore and uh, another person. I, I forgot the person's name. I think Calvin Ridley were the best two route runners he's seen in the um, – in the draft, in the draft, um, so he got Steve Smith seal, seal of approval. So, I mean, that's good for me. But um, I don't know, man. I was just thinking of a taller, faster variety. So, if we do get DJ Moore, I'm mad at it. But the Ito Smith thing, I definitely will be upset. Like, please do not get this five nine dude. At least get like a you know, like get a Kalen Ballage or, or um, you know, somebody just you know, you don't have to spend like. You know, a high draft pick on running back, but don't get a, a super small running back. You know what I'm saying? I don't think that would be uh, conducive for what we're trying to do. At least get a running back that's like 5'10, 5'11, like, you know, like regular, you know, size. This is 5'9 running backs, too. You know, but um, not not so much a change of pace back that That back can do all around. You know what I'm saying? They can do everything. I, I mean, you're better off finding a back that's, you know, that's all right in both areas than great in one and horrible in another. So we'll see what happens. I'm not for the Ito Smith thing, but, um, We'll see what they decide to do. Well, that's it for me, guys. Make sure you like, subscribe, and share with cool things like Facebook and Reddit and Instagram and wherever else. And guys, in the comment section, how do you feel about Ben Navarro buying the team? Do you like it? Do you rather David Tipper? I'm pretty sure most of you guys don't want Alan Kirschenbaum to buy the team. So tell me who you prefer. You know, put a, do a little list, man. You know, I like I like seeing your little list. You know, uh, David Tipper number one if he is, or Ben Navarro number one, and then you know two and three. Um, how do you feel about the Ito Smith thing? Do you think a smaller running back would be better for our system? Because I don't see it. You know, maybe maybe it's because um, you know, uh, Nerve, Tur Nerve Turner had uh, uh, Damian Thomason and then he had Darren Sproles, but um, I think we'll be in trouble if we do that. You know, I mean, don't worry. I understand you had success with it before, but um, you got to be able to adapt to your situation, and I don't think that would be the most conducive thing for us. Um, but you know, they're the football guys, so they they probably know more than me. And definitely tell me how you feel about DJ Moore because I think a lot of you guys were, you know, fans of his. I remember um, you guys were in my comment section saying that, oh, DJ Moore is a good, you know, receiver and all this and that, whatever. But, um, you know, I obviously told you I'm more of a DJ Chark fan. I think he's, you know, uh, definitely um, kind of underrated. I think his uh, bad QB play kind of hindered him. And I think he'll be a good steal in the draft. But, um, you know, let me know, guys. Get in the comment section. I mean, share this with all your Panthers fans and friends, you know. Um, let Panther know, the Panther Nation know about me, you know, and, uh, you know, keep pounding, guys. Stay safe, and I will see y'all next time.